Hello and welcome to Starship Sova's HQ. Today we're going to look at a little gem of a book by Jack Vance. Possibly lost in the kind of eons of time, but well worth digging out. We're looking at Jack Vance's Blue World. Yes, hello everyone. Welcome to Starship Sova's HQ. Today we are going to look at the little, little, tiny little novel there by Jack Vance, The Blue World. And actually, I pulled this book up a few weeks ago when I was talking about, you know, like how, how big and how small I like a novel. This was a prime example of a cracking book put together at, a hundred, I think there's 190 pages there, 196 pages. And everything you want in a good story is in that book. That's the kind of beauty of a, you know, Jack Vance, why he was so big and why he was, or why he was so clever at writing. Just a great book. Now this, The Blue World, it came out in 1966, like I say. And it was actually, I think it was nominated for a, a Nebula Award. It never won it, but it was nominated for one. And like I say, just, you know, time goes and it filters down and it, memory gets lost and you kind of forget about some of these great books. So I want you to go and kind of, you know, dig this one out. It's it's a weekend's reading, if you know, if you're kind of a fast reader. I'm actually not a fast reader. I'm a fast listener, but certainly not a, a fast reader. And it took us a couple of weeks, you know, just kind of reading. About most of my readings are kind of nighttime in bed before I kind of, you know, hit the pillow. But a, a, just a stunning little book to read. Before it came out, Jack Vance actually wrote, I think it was a, a short story in 1964. I've got it written down. Fantastic magazine, Kraken. He wrote that story. And then from there, he developed this The Blue World. And like I say, I, I, I'm going to try my best not to give away spoilers. And like I mentioned, like I say, in the last show, it's about basically these inhabitants living on this water world and the only kind of land mass there is are these giant lily pond, you know, lily ponds. And, you know, big enough to kind of put houses and structures on there and everything. You know, the huge things in the kind of this trail of lily ponds, you know, goes right across the world. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a massive, huge thing. Because when I first picked it up, you know, when I first actually, you look at the little picture, I don't know if you can kind of see there, you're thinking, well, oh, God, the things are not that big and, you know, for like a society to kind of survive. But totally, you know, much more bigger than what you kind of realise. And it starts off where, or the premise of the story is this kind of spaceship took off from wherever, escaped from wherever, and crash landed on this world. And, inhabit, you know, descendants, you know, 12 generations of kind of make a, you know, a life and a living on this water planet. And I think the great concept with this book is over those generations, you know, time has kind of, you know, clouded things over. So, you know, names, you know, in even the, kind of the documents that these kind of first descendants you know, crash landed on, you know, the writing, their kind of their logs, their memoirs, those have survived. But their interpretations for these, you know, new in, or these kind of settlers in this day and age, they, they, they can't really quite work out what they were talking about, you know, so things have getting all mixed up. And, you know, when, when the kind of, you know, in that age when they kind of first escaped this, and I think, I think they were possibly escaping like maybe a, a penal colony, some sort of prison, uh, just the way the names have been kind of messed around there now, because you've got, you know, the likes of our world, you know, we've got like advertisers, we've got the press, we've got say cooks, bakers, we've got all those trades. In this world where Jack Vance has put it, you've got, and I've got a list of them there, you've got the anarchists, you've got the producers, the bezlers, the incendiaries, the swindlers. So these are the kind of the, the trades of this, this world. And I think it's just through these eons of times, you know, the kind of, the, the, the must have had like swindlers were on this ship, you know, and, and that's become their kind of trade. And it's just a, a fascinating concept of a world created, you know, as time and eons go over, you know, things change and which now becomes the norm. These are kind of these crafts, these trades, you know, the swindlers, you know, a respectable bunch of people. <laughs> That's the kind of the embezzlers, you know what I mean? They're a proper part of like society and structure. And like I say, it is all in this book. That's the, the, the great thing about it. And the, the actual story and the premise, and like I say, I've tried my best to kind of not go there and kind of, you know, spoil the ending. 
But it's about one, one certain gentleman who's kind of, well, the, the whole society kind of is kind of governed by these kind of, there is these sea monsters called Kraken. And to appease them, they've got like kind of these almost priests that kind of worship them and kind of give offerings to them. And it's just one man decides to kind of, that's enough. You know, we don't have to kind of appease these kind of almost godlike creatures, you know, because they come and they kind of just take all the kind of food, you know, and the profits and sometimes, you know, damage their kind of lily pond ponds. And actually, you know, so in, in some cases, you know, injure and kill, you know, the inhabitants. And I think, you know, at a certain time it happens and one, our protagonist just kind of stands up there and says, enough's enough. And that's the kind of whole premise of the story. What happens after this one man puts his hand up and says, we have no more of this. We're not kind of, you know, belittling to these kind of beasts of the, the ocean. And it's just the social structure of what develops from there. You know, because some people have got power who, you know, like the high priests who kind of worship these beasts, who kind of give offerings to these beasts. They're, you know, quite high up in the kind of social structure of this world Jack Vance has created. And they don't want to give away that power. And it's exactly like today's society, you know what I mean? You kind of, you've got the kind of the big wigs there. They don't want to kind of step down. And, you know, what happens is this, and it's called Slackla Hast. And I've had to write that name down because that's a nice thing as well. And it takes us back to kind of, you know, gulfing stories from about, you know, like old Jack Van stories and stories from a, a, you know, a bygone age. When you've got those names that are kind of hard pr pronounced. I don't know how you know everybody else reads them, but when I see a name on a, in, on a word and I can't actually pronounce it, I just physically, you know, just I physically, I just look at it. And that, the way the letters kind of form is how I form the picture of this person. Do you know what I mean? And then you get the kind of Jack Vance fills in the gap and gives his personality and his character. But it's just the way the name looks on the page, you know, because some of these names in this book, you know, of, of people, you know, in the story, are just impossible to kind of, to, to read and almost see out loud, you know, and sometimes I've asked, you know, writers about this, and they say, ah, they, they couldn't even, you know, say themselves, so what I do, I, I just look at the word, and that word is the person, and then, like I say, then a good writer kind of fills in the gaps, and gives you, you know, the, the whole person. And, like I say, it's just the story of this Slack Hassler moving away and, you know, he takes some people away and they kind of go and live on a new set of lily ponds. And it's the story of this kind of conflict between the old generations who live on the original lily ponds. I'm saying lily ponds, they're not kind of lily ponds, but that's the idea. And this new, you know, outcasts almost. And, you know, in its... In its way, it's, and like I say, I don't want to give too much, but there's a, there's a little bit of a, a brutal ending to it as well. Nin, like I say, 1966, and it just, you think, oh, right, there we go. And another great thing, it just ends, bang, finished. You know what I mean? There's no kind of dragging it, or there's no even, there's no kind of looking to say, oh, the end's coming up, the end's coming up. It just ends, and it's just what you want. You know what I mean? It's kind of that's it. It's final. It's finished. And like I say, 190 pages. This is a great read. You know, and the funny, I was lucky enough to interview Jack Vance a couple of times. You know, in his kind of latter years of his life, and you know, Jack Vance's library is huge. And we'll go there again, and we'll kind of delve into work. And Jack Vance, you know, when you kind of ask him about, you know, these stories, these stories. They didn't really seem to make you know, a big deal to him. You know, he just wrote them and that was it. He was such more interested in his kind of jazz music and you know things like that. But it was lovely to kind of, and somewhere in the histories of Starship Sova's you know, chronicles there, we've got two interviews with Jack Vance. And I did, I set one up if anyone wants to kind of listen to me, where I had Jack Vance and Frederick Paul, you know, and there was a three-way conversation with ourselves, you know, doing that. And it was just, oh man, you know what I mean? Just like classic moments for me. But please get yourself a copy of The Blue World by Jack Vance. A fine, fine story which you will love. The social structure, everything is in there that you need for a great story. It'll take you a weekend to read. Let us know what you think about it. Do you know what I mean? Do you like it? Like I say, in its time, it was there for a nebula award. You know, you kind of get better than that. And just 
time buys and when people forget these kind of great books. So that's the idea. Bring them to you. So let us know. Comments at the bottom. Until next time, I would just like to say, good night from me. I hope you enjoyed that show. Please think about subscribing. You will get the shows each and every time I release them. And why not check out the videos? Worst science fiction books I have ever picked. Oh, they're there. Check it out. And while you're on, subscribe to the newsletter. You get Starship Subas Volume 1 free. Fantastic writers in there. Just sign up for the newsletter and you'll get that.